Does anybody know what I mean when I talk about data journalism? Has anybody got any kind of concept of that? So it's, a kind of, it's one of those things that um, is kind of new and very, very trendy at the moment, but actually it's quite kind of old and uh, quite traditional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got a bit of a presentation, but I will, I'm going to try and go through it as quick as I can. And if anybody had any, has any questions at the end, just, or even while I'm talking, just kind of shout. Okay. So um, this is called kind of open data journalism at The Guardian. So I suppose what I mean by open data journalism is a lot of journalism now is about being open and available. And it's very different to the kind of journalism of the past, which was a real kind of one-way process. You would sit in your ivory tower and kind of throw things out to the world and people would kind of gratefully receive it. And that was it. That was the level of your kind of interaction with, uh, with your readers. But now that's all changed. And a lot of the, kind of the work we do is, uh, has changed too. In some ways, it's kind of it's quite traditional. This is the very first Guardian from 1821. And on the back page is a table of data, right? which is uh, it's not something you'd necessarily expect, but that's what it was. And it was leaked to us as well. It's kind of WikiLeaks-esque. And um, although it's about schools, and um, this stuff now would not be controversial. It just shows a number of people, uh, pupils at schools in Manchester, and how much they cost. So, you know, it's real basic data. But this was 1821. So this was 60 years before education was compulsory. And then, um, you know, who was educated kids was a very, very political issue, and you couldn't get any reliable data. And it was almost to become a proxy for measuring poverty, because places where people were poor were where the Sunday schools were, because the Sunday schools were, were how most people kind of got educated to read and write. It wasn't so much about learning the Bible as, as learning the basics of education. And, um, you know, that, this kind of stuff we, was reprinted a lot by The Guardian. But again, in those days, data was kind of was very, very access inaccessible. It was published, you know, on paper, and the people it was for were, were, you know, the geeks and the statisticians, but that was it. But now, kind of data is everywhere. It's all over the place. You've got, you know, Google's public data explorer. We, we provide data. You've got data.gov, data.gov.uk here. And this is kind of open data is kind of <coughs> blossoming around the world. So if you're a journalist, if you do what I do, then if you can't understand data at all, you're going to be in a kind of difficult position. And it also means that there's a kind of a role now for people to be curators. You know, this idea that actually there's so much stuff out there that if you're interested in something, I don't know, like carbon emissions or crime figures, or where are you going to start? So we can kind of try and help people find, find the places to start. So this is, uh, this is James Cameron. The eagle-eyed, among you will spot, it's not the guy who directed Avatar or Aliens, but he was a fantastic Guardian journalist. 50s and 60s was in Vietnam, Korea. And so I'm a kind of master storyteller. And I t he, t he said this, and I, I, you know, I, I kind of tend to live a lot with what James Cameron said, but the, the fact that facts must never get in the way of truth, and you can take that any way you want, but I take it to mean that numbers on their own, without kind of context, are just, uh, are just numbers. It's that kind of context of stuff that we can give it that, that make them kind of valuable and important to people. So what is open journalism? It's not just Google Spreadsheets, so we do use a lot of Google Spreadsheets. Um, part of the reason we, did, we do that is because um, uh, they're very, very cheap and easy to use and so on. But I suppose, I'm kind of stepping back from this, what does, what does a journalist do and what does a data journalist do, which is kind of the sort of thing we, we talk about a lot in the office. But you know, I, I've kind of distilled what I think a journalist does. I think a journalist kind of investigates, researches, writes and reports, engages, really crucially kind of makes people feel involved in the story and you know, reveals and exposes. So what does a data journalist do? Investigate, research, write and report, engage, reveal and expose. The skills um, may be different, but the things you do are exactly the same. It's just that we have new ways of, of doing that now. So this is a kind of a very 10-point uh, guide to kind of open data journalism, how it works. I suppose the first thing we do very kind of crucially is we kind of reveal the data behind a story. So this is kind of atypical week. It's from, uh, it's from last month, but it's, you know, it could, could be any week. So this is the Guardian's data store. So every day we publish stories. We use Google Spreadsheets, as said often to publish data, and partly we did that because when we were being set up, I couldn't get any budget for a developer. So um, I needed kind of a, a cheap and free data set, so we, database, so we started using Google Spreadsheets. It just become what we do now because it's very easy for people to share around. But every day we'll publish stuff that's often kind of quite newsy. It's stuff that's in the news, stuff that we're thinking about. So today, before I came here, I was looking at the US presidential debates and sort of things people were talking about. And we'll publish the data, and we'll also visualize it and analyze it a bit and kind of give people some of that some of that kind of key context. Um, so I suppose what we're doing is we're curating that data. We're providing stuff that people need to know. So for instance, uh, this report from the OECD 
comes out every year. Nobody really understands it, but it's really, really important. It has things like class sizes and how much teachers get paid and how kids do in different countries. And you can compare different countries in the same way. So if we can kind of excise out of that 150 spreadsheets, excise the kind of key 10 that people need, then that's a really useful thing to do. Uh, we also, this particular week, we covered uh, newspaper readership surveys. We had um, unemployment figures out, and every time unemployment figures come out, which is once a month again, it's really complicated, data is all over the place, and we try and make it clear for people. We, this is just using Google Fusion tables, which we use a lot, um, partly because it's free, uh, again, and because it's easy to produce a map quite quickly that's quite sophisticated without me having to use a developer. I can just do it on my own, which is kind of is empowering, but it's also important when you're, you're in a hurry.